myself Santosh. I do have around nine years of experience working in IT industry, and currently I'm working as manager in Microsoft. My core experience is towards data science, data engineering, and data analytics project. Currently, I'm managing around eight projects, and total I have worked with around eighty projects from different domains, such as banking, healthcare, insurance, e-commerce, and retail. And I'm a certified trainer. Taking training for KSR for the last five years. Okay, let's get started. A very warm good morning to everyone. Thanks for your time, and we'll start with a session number one in learning this course, which is going to be data engineering. And as part of the agenda, I'll be like walking you through what exactly is this course. Who will be a potential candidate, or who will be the person who wants to jump into this technology, right? And what you're going to learn, and how we are going to take forward. what is a road map and we are going to start with our first skill okay that will be the plan and that will be the agenda so before i even talk about the subject it's my privilege to talk about myself uh, most of you know me and people who don't know myself santosh uh, i've been working in it for almost 10 years now 2013 i started my internship and now 2023 i'm successfully working in microsoft as manager so microsoft we do have two things one is at the service side one is at the product side so we try to build the pipelines for most of our, of our clients so that is the role i am working on and all my experience is towards data right from the day one of my career i've been working with data which includes data analysis data science and data engineering of course that's one of the key and apart from that i do have around 5 years of experience in teaching field i do train a lot of students offline online we go to the colleges and we teach the final year students and as well as we also go with a corporate training where we do take trainings for the corporates and i'm a certified corporate trainer as well well this is a introduction about myself now with that let's talk about the agenda and the one thing which we really need to talk about is data engineering what is data engineering okay now before even we talk about data engineering i would like to ask you one question imagine a life without farmers what will be the situation if you never have any farmers as a profession just imagine for a minute if you don't have any farmers across the world what would have happened there is no food right you can do by yourself right okay let me tell you one thing i never buy vegetables fruits outside okay i have my own farm i have my own plants i take care of it i use it why i need farmers everyone won't do it okay anything else imagine a life without farmers what will happen now i'll switch the gears now imagine a life where you don't have stylish there is no one to do hair cut for you there is no one to do all your makeup and all imagine there is no stylish at all in this profession do you think you still look good do you look good without even going for beauty parlor or a salon or hair cut now every profession every profession is in need right whether you are a farmer or whether you are a stylish or even whatever professions you are everyone has their own impact now let's talk about data engineer as a profession a life without a data engineer is a very hectic for most of the technologists because we never know who will be the person who will be helping us in terms of data right so just like a farmer who deals with all the farming and data engineering is a person who deals with data right so in most of the applications which is which you see or which you are getting used to it the apps which you use the website which you use all of this it really requires data right and if that data is not proper who can help you right a person who helps in gathering the data organizing the data making sure that everything is in place for the workable format and that's the person who is called data engineering before we even we jump into the topic i would like to talk about two use cases the first use case the first use case imagine we do have a healthcare data right we do have a healthcare data now what we know about healthcare data 
the moment you go into an hospital we do have an inpatients outpatients inpatients are the people who are getting admitted for a treatment outpatients are the people who are just visiting for the first time or like they are visiting for a, a normal a, a fever or whatever it is now apart from that what and all is involved in the healthcare data first of all whatever is happening within the hospitals that has to be reported to government right so your patients they can book the appointment over the websites over the app can go on to the counter and take an appointment look for the specified doctors and in case the doctors has prescribed some medicines you have to go to pharmacy and in pharmacy again there is a like uh, analysis that is going on which tablet uh, patients are taking more on what type of disease right and how much of dosage now coming back to the next layer if you are related to an healthcare insurance is what is important right everyone has to be linked with an insurance every patient has to have an insurance if it's not in, if he or she is not insured and we have to talk more on the insurance side and we have to link them together well on a whole if you see there are a lot of things i don't know how many of you have seen this articles uh, recently also there is some article saying that your apple watch right apple watch has detected a person's heart attack just before the actual heart attack maybe the heart uh, the device which he was wearing had shown the symptoms well what can your device do your device is continuously monitoring your health care right your health details and in case of test let's say you have taken a test in the hospital a and you're coming to hospital b that document that x ray or even uh, scans that reports has to be taken forward just think on a high level how much of data is involved right we have the patient's informations we have device information and most of the information now is in the electronic form right so recently i took a test and they're sending in the pdf form they didn't even give me a hard copy right and medicines clinic laboratories so much of data is there now on a whole if i want to analyze this what is required for me the first step is required for me is data now let me tell you what is happening in the current system let me tell you what is happening in the current system now the data is scattered across different formats in different database imagine we do have an inpatient data that we do have around 78000 that people are storing in csv file formats and let's say pharmacy pharmacy it's a bit we'll say that it's a bit of special data that they are storing in a xml format now in this way if all the data is been stored in a different format when i want to communicate to us government this is us government and as i said every healthcare data has to be reported to government in india maybe we report it to indian health organization whereas in uh, us maybe we report it to us government so in this way if they want to analyze the best example is covid right what happened during the covid so we do have a report that is getting generated state by state and each state comes with their own report the number of cases the number of positive cases the number of cures right and then they will collectively work in within the country and they give it in your news and the numbers comes in the report right that is what was happening do you think one person can go and count each and every case across different different states not possible we do have 29 states in india each state has to take a ownership of clubbing the individual district individual small small town right individual cities metro cities non metro cities they have to count everything and they have to organize it within their state now and this state information is it enough no we have to do it 29 times the reason 29 states and then all a whole as a india we represent one number the best example i can give is a covid only because the data every single data every single case was very important for us correct and the same way 
I will be taking the test in a normal clinic. How will the government of India will get to know that I have taken the test? And that's where the data is reaching to the top level, right? So if I add a home checkup, if I have taken a test, and uh, if I've taken some uh, a small test on COVID, that is reaching to the higher level. How many tests, how many cases, how many has been uh, serious, how many have recovered? How is this possible? Someone is working in the back end. Who is that? And that professions are data engineers. Now, coming back to the same example, we do have inpatients, pharmacy, labs, and clinics and research that each data is coming in a different format. Assume that I want to drive a solution for this. How will I handle it? I will hire five people, each one maintaining one one set of data, right? And all five people going to the government and talking about in my case, this is inpatients, this number of cases. And the other person says, this is a number of cases that I've got in the laboratory, and this is what it is. Now, government of US will get frustrated. What is this? A simple thing, why five people are reaching out to me? This is not at all an optimized solution. The reason, five people maintaining five different file formats and five people are reaching out to us government and talking about the numbers how will the government understand right now as in then just like if you have any problem you go to the lawyers we do have a problem with the data and they have approached me who am i data engineer now what as a data engineer i can do is uh, there could be a, a duplication as well right some of them would have went to the clinic first and then they would have went to the hospital or they would have taken a medicine in the pharmacy first so one patient may be part of three different data set correct possibility is there right whenever we fall sick we directly don't go to an hospital first we go to pharmacy we take the bill we take the doctor's prescription. And then before that, if there is too much of seriousness, I would go to clinic. And then finally, I'll go and admit it. One patient information is present in three sets. Don't you think there's a duplication? How will I handle that? And these people are maintaining a different, different formats. How to handle that? Right? And that's the one thing which we need to figure it out. In order to do that, I am coming up with a proposed solution. I'm going to come up with another solution. Let's see what is that solution. So in the other solution which I have, what I am going to do is, I'm going to replace all the five people who's taking care of all the five data sets. Instead, the one which as a data engineer, which I am proposing is, just gather all the data and put it in the database. First, store it. Whichever file format it is there, store it in a place. From there, you hire a person who will be like a data engineer who will take care of all the management of the data, removing the duplicates, removing all the null values, treating the missing values. Wherever there is a null, try to fill it. Duplicates will be there. You can remove the duplicates, organize it well, come up with a proper data reading. And that's what as a solution, I will propose. Now, only this person will go and talk to the government. Why you need five people? Why you need five people to manage five different file formats? Today, it's five files. Tomorrow, it becomes 50 file formats. Will you hire 50 people to manage each one individually? Definitely no. So this is a solution which I am proposing. I will just gather the data and just organize it well first in the database. <laughs> and from there, I will be creating all the steps whenever I want to remove the duplicates, whenever I want to remove the null values, whenever I want to treat the abnormalities, all this is something which I'll be doing as part of the system. Okay, so you will be seeing a lot of difference in the solution one and solution two. This is solution one, five people going and talking to the government. Now one person going and talking to the government. Now, if this example is hard to understand, let me tell you KSR's problem. Okay, so let me tell you what KSR is facing a problem. So the first problem which KSR is facing is, imagine KSR Data Vision is organizing a course. The same example, data engineering course. Now in this group, almost how many are there? 97 are there. 97 minus one, excluding me, 96 people are there. In this 96 people, how many of you got information about this course, time, duration, demo, 
on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, or on Twitter, or on Telegram. Right? I cannot come to a conclusion that all 97 people have got WhatsApp message. I cannot come to a conclusion that all 97 people have got from Instagram. Definitely no. Each one would have preferred different, different field. I am a person who never uses WhatsApp more, but I use Instagram. I am a person who never use Facebook, but I use LinkedIn. Correct? So each one will have their own social media platform and you would have reached to us and you are sitting in the class now. Now, just observe, I'll tell you what is KSR doing. Okay, so let me share you what, uh, let me share you the secrets that what KSR is doing. What KSR is doing is we have five different platforms. We have five different platforms and this five different platforms, KSR has hired five people to manage the leads. You're getting calls, right? Once you registered, you will get a call from KSR saying that, hey, thanks for joining the demo. How was the demo? How was the feedback? Would you like to continue? So those type of calls, you will get it. What KSR has done is they have five people managing the five platforms. Person A, person B, person C, person Z, person B. And we do have Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or Facebook. And each one is managing their own data. Correct? Now, all these five people, they talk to the leads, that is whoever is interested for this course, they go and talk. And finally, all five people are going and talking to CEO of KSR Data Vision, right? They're all five people going and talking. Today, I called 45 people. Today, in that 45 people, 40 people have responded and 25 people have interested in demo and 20 people have come form for the course. Like this, each one is going and talking to our CEO, right? Now, let's talk about the challenge. It's not your problem. It's not my problem. It's a universal problem. People lack patience, right? People lack patience. If you have patience, I would say most of the problem is solved. But we are not patient. Personally, what you do, I'll tell you. You have seen the Instagram post. You have seen the Instagram post. You got to know about the course, but... You did not get respond in the next 10 minutes. You did not get respond from KSR team when you have approached us from Instagram. What do you do? As I said, you lack patience. You immediately reach out to us over phone or over WhatsApp or over Telegram. 100% you will do this. Because for you, there is an immediate requirement to know the information. Unfortunately, our team was who are the person who was taking care of Instagram as went for a break. He did not pick your call. You called in Instagram only directly. They did not respond and you lack patience. You again came back to us and called through the WhatsApp. Now in WhatsApp, assume that you got the proper response. And in WhatsApp, we also told you that please wait for a couple of days. We will be sharing you all details of the course. Okay. Problem solved. Now, the guy who have missed the call in the Instagram would have noticed after two days and he would have called you back. The, again, the WhatsApp also, the WhatsApp person also would have called you back. Don't you get frustration? From KSR itself, why four to five people are calling? The same thing happens with you also. You are getting a credit card calls. You are getting a personal loan calls. You are getting a car loan calls. You are getting a marriage loan calls. You keep on getting from the same bank multiple times. Don't you get frustrated? Yes. Let me tell you one honest example. Today, if you are getting multiple calls on a single day from the same bank, again and again for a credit card, personal loan, as well as your, all of your loans, that means just imagine in your mind that bank does not have a proper data engineering pipelines. Very simple. Today, if you are getting multiple calls from the credit card or a personal loan or a car loan from the same bank again and again, the end goal is just think in your mind that bank does not have a proper data engineering pipeline. And that is the reason you are getting multiple calls, the same number again and again. The same way, if you are also getting calls from KSR again and again, just one thing you will do. You'll just block the number and move forward. Correct? Now, imagine KSR has hired me as a data engineer to give a solution to this. You know what I did? As a proposed solution, I gathered all the data, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, everything. I just took it and then I have stored in the database first, right? And in the database, I have seen 
how many of them are same person whether you are a whatsapp user or you are a facebook user or a linkedin user one common thing which i assume is you maintain the same email id with the same email id you would have logged in with your linkedin account the same email id would you have logged in with your instagram worst case i'm saying okay maybe if you are maintaining it three three to four different accounts that's fine but i'm assuming that all of your social media accounts you are maintaining with the same email id what i will do is with this email id i will check whether you have reached us through facebook first or instagram first all this type of analysis i will be doing who am i data engineer the first step what i would be focusing is get the data from the different data sources put it in a table then you start working on uh, you can remove the duplicates you can remove some junk values special characters cleaning everything you do and then you can talk with your ceo and i'll be the person who i can say that boss this is what the number of leads we are getting in this this is what the number of leads we are getting in this and after this we are talking to our clients that is ceo now ceo says okay that's a good one how many people have reached to multiple platforms i have a number how many of them have reached through instagram how many of them have reached to whatsapp i can get to know now i will start debugging it why the people who have reached to in, reached in instagram haven't got any response and that's the reason they are again coming back to whatsapp now what is the root cause that the person in the instagram what is he doing why is he not calling why is he not responding now that type of research that type of root cause we can figure it out by how once you create the pipelines now two use case i have talked about it one is a healthcare and one is a our own problem and recently all these five people were replaced by me as a data engineer i can do it why you need five people can you pay salary for five people and five people going and talking to ceo is it a right way definitely not we need to figure out a solution and with that solution we will be able to take forward okay now i'll give a small example for you can anyone tell me what is wrong with this data can anyone tell me what is wrong with this data okay let's talk about now let's talk about i am giving this data to bi reporters okay this is my data us uk um we do have a different country and different country sales and profit information imagine that we are giving this data to our reports bi report developers or a power bi developers tableau developers excel developers whoever it is i don't care i am giving this data for them to analyze they will come up with a report like this wow what a report right we do have a lot of pillars and this is what is expected from this data tell me is it correct okay now if i give this type of data there are a lot of bi reporters who directly go and report it and if i want to go and see the total sales by us is 9650 is the highest one but that's not correct right now the way we should have handled this is the way we should have handled this is first you replace with us or uk there are only two countries actually with the two countries you count all the values and give it as a uk and then us doesn't matter whether it's a us or usa it's one and the same right us u dot s or united states both are same each one has their own way of presentation but at the end what is required is this is a report that is required but unfortunately in the current system nowadays there is no one who can do the data cleaning there is no one who can make the data readily available just like farmers are very proud of their profession i am also very proud of my profession data engineer every in every single day the work will be very much interesting the reason is you're trying to make something which is not ready to work correct when something is not working you have to take that ownership in order to make that work and that's a beautiful profession for you which is data engineers 
Now, as a data engineer, what I will do is I will organize it well, replace all these special characters, go with up the same name convention, and also go and report it to the BI report developers. This is a small example for data cleaning. If I'm moving one step forward, tell me what is wrong with this type of data? Yes, now if you observe carefully, we do have just two genders, male and female, but one of them is given M, one of them is given MLE, one of them is given MMA, female F, F, E, F, E, M, L, E. How many categorization we have? Now, if I go and analyze this, you know what will happen? M, A, L, E, male, it will count as one. M, A, it will count as one. M, it will count as one. What is this? This is where the data is inconsistent. Now, if this date type of data is given to me, I would simply focus on, I would simply focus on changing this to M and F. How I do? Later part of the course, we will see what type of transformations, what type of information that we can add it. But doing this is a really important thing. Who will do this? Do you think Java developers will do? Do you think BI developers no. will do? Here you go. You are going to do. Who are we? We are going to be a data engineer. The first thing you have to keep in mind is, first you need to understand what is this course about. This course is all about data, organizing the data, structurizing the data, gathering the data, cleaning the data, and making it meaningful. Till here, you have to be pretty clear in what you're doing. Another example where I want to give is each and every, let, let's say we, we KSR itself, we are taking your information, okay? We are asking your experience and rather than asking experience directly, we ask your age. What's your age? Okay. So Ankit says that I'm 22 years. Hema says that 300 months. What is this 300 months? And I have to divide by 12 to figure out what is our age. And one person says my age is 25.43, right? And one person says date of birth. Now, again, the data is inconsistent, but it is a very straightforward for me. I know what is today's date. I know what is their given data. Why can't I calculate like this? Why can't I calculate like this? Very simple. Wherever you have month, divide by 12. Wherever you have decimal, round it up. Wherever you have a date of birth, subtract it with today's date, you will get the number of years. There is a lot of difference between the table A, which you're seeing on the left side and the table B, which you're seeing on the right side. There is a huge difference because what really matters is data. Every single data point has a value, right? Never miss that. Ignoring a single data point, ignoring a single customer, ignoring a single customer's age can really create a problem for you, right? Now, where we are, we talked about the use cases. We talked about what we are going to achieve. How are we going to propose a solution? And the first problem that we do have is a data cleaning steps. And who is going to do the data cleaning? I have told you in the start of the class as well. Imagine like you are a farmer. Imagine like you are a stylish. Imagine like you are an engineer now. All you need to know is what should be your roles and responsibilities before even learning a course. Just because someone is saying that this course is in demand, just because that your friends are saying that you will get a high package, just because that we are all uh, seeing, I mean, you are all seeing our YouTube videos, didn't make a decision. Think about what you can do to the IT market. One major problem, one major problem in my experience, gratefully, I have worked with almost eight zero projects, 80 projects. In the span of 10 years of my experience, I have worked with 80 projects. The one common problem in every project is data. Data, data, and data. One data will have a missing values. One data will have a missing information. One data will have an inconsistent like this. Every way the data is a problem. And something, if you have a problem, if you start, start fixing it, that's the best satisfaction you can get it. 
and i've already told you i've been working in data science data analytics and data engineering but personally the one which i like the most is data engineering role you know why something which is not in proper and you're organizing it and you're making others to work that's where you will be contributing to the projects imagine you are a bi developer who wants to understand what is the average age of the students who are joining our course if i give you table 1 or if i give you table 2 which one you will be happy 100% if i give table 2 you will be happy reason it's making your work easier you simply go get the average of all the students job done if i give you table a you'll get frustrated hey what is this who will clean the data who will clean the data right and that's where we are here to organize it well to make sure that everything is readily available for people a simple question i'll tell you imagine you have been invited by your friends okay and you are supposed to prepare lunch in their house the moment you enter their kitchen if everything is scattered spilled and uh, like all the vessels have been used do you ever feel like cooking never but if it is everything is clean well organized everything is properly named that's where you get the feel of cooking when cooking itself will have so much of interest this is projects this is applications there are 1 lakh startups in bangalore there are lakhs of companies all over the world business we ksr itself is a business amazon flipkart insurance companies e-commerce companies telecommunication companies how much of data how much of system where do you go correct now the next question i'll ask you is okay this is very simple anyone can clean the data but now we are going to the next set of problem you know what's the next set of problem how much of data is getting generated across the world if i just ask you and if i give you a one minute time quickly go to your app smartphone look at all the apps count it and come back and tell me what is the count why i am i am 100% sure you will have minimum of 20 25 applications in your smartphone 100% 100% you will have it correct maybe i am a phone pay user you will be a google pay user i am a flipkart user you will be an amazon user right i watch movies in hotstar you may watch movies in netflix either of the one you will be using it i may be using ola you may be using uber but if one person is using so much of data so much of apps please remember that each app requires an account without account nothing you can use it without an account you cannot watch a netflix movie without a account you cannot order anything in amazon without an account nothing you can do either it should be linked to your gmail account correct just go and count in your mobile you will find minimum 20 25 applications and just to give you a, a high level insight in the last year the world population has touched to 8 billion 8 billion and in this 8 billion almost 3.5 billion to 4 4 billion people are using smartphones are using data are using apps i don't know how many of you observe this i am a data oriented person that's why i'm keeping uh, keep giving these examples um every day in your mobile you'll get a notification that how much of data you have utilized you have utilized 1.3 gb of data 2.5 gb of data this week and which are the apps which is consuming more data right now let me tell you one thing just before the sleep right just before the sleep imagine that you sleep at 11 o'clock just 30 minutes before the sleep you know what you do you'll scroll all your apps even if there is no need also you go and scroll it no one would have sent whatsapp 
message to you still you go and watch everyone's status no one would have sent you any message in instagram still you go spend 30 minutes in watching reels well just think about this point you are using this apps for time pass and for them for the companies whether it's an instagram or a whatsapp or a twitter for them it's a data that is getting generated we both are on the opposite sides you and me are not same here you are using it for usage i am using for my analysis you are just using for time pass and for me being an instagram person working in instagram my objective is how can i recommend this video to many many people how can i make money how can i improve my business that's where we sit on the opposite side a normal user and the people who are working in organization is not same though i may also use it i may also go and watch youtube videos i may also watch instagram videos but our objective is different you watch it for time pass and me working in a company my objective is okay how can i pass this message to most of the individual customers the more you see just think about this the more you spend on the each and every single app i am making money as a company i am making money all the people who are sitting in the class are listening and we are generating money here how it is possible we are using net we are using data we are using zoom we are using our own app that's why i'm saying we are all on opposite side and now you are the person who are coming from that side to this side to be working under technical side and that's what is having the problem today it's fine just a normal health data or a normal ksr data we do have only 10000 students but just imagine amazon just imagine the usage how many customers are there how much of usage is happening how you will manage this a single user 20 applications 20 accounts 1 gb of data that is spent on an average just imagine 8 billion people on this earth 4.3 billion people are using internet and just do a mind calculation how much of data that is getting generated now taking one step forward why data engineering is now becoming in trend and not in the past all of the people who are sitting in the class are listening saying that why data engineering is now being spoken and not in the past and the hard fact is all of the applications which you are seeing in the market have been launched in the last 20 years or so we all i mean most of you will be of my age okay 90s kids 90 91 92 93 born we are the people who have experienced the life with smartphone without smartphone until my final year graduation i never had smartphone correct now and after that slowly we also started using smartphones internet and all right but if you observe carefully i have given you a a number stating that which app when it was launched right which app when it was launched let me tell you a simple example can you tell me which indian is having most number of followers in instagram virat kohli virat kohli excellent virat kohli is the number one sportsman in india with the more number of followers i would say is having followers more than 200 million if i am not wrong it's more than 200 million now today just listen this okay just listen this today he is a player who is been a very high player and is also his performance is too good whenever he eats a century recently also i have seen okay the day he has it 75 75th century and even the test match also everyone started posting in instagram and whatsapp as a status and story listen to this today virat kohli is been known one of the popular sportsmanship and he has having more than more than 200 million followers today 
do you know what is called debut anyone what is called debut to start to start it just starts for the first time life debut is a day where they has started uh their profession for example my debut will be uh, 2014 jan 1st that's the day i joined the company virat kohli's debut match was in the year 2008 and what if i say you the day he started playing his first match what if i say you there was no instagram and there was no whatsapp can you believe this can you ever believe this when virat kohli played his first match there was no whatsapp to give your status there was no instagram to upload your story and today whatever he does he puts in his story and you people all watch all the people who in this group would have uh, been his follower and that's why he has touched that 200 million followers what is happening in the market applications are increasing users are increasing data is increasing and why all this is happening in in the recent times it's all because of last 20 years there are a lot of applications that has been evolved in the market how come this is possible it's all because of the innovations which is the most important part of your body is it a brain or is it a heart even if the brain is dead you can still be in coma correct you can still survive with heart but without heart you cannot survive you would have heard in hospital terminology as brain dead have you ever seen anyone saying heart dead yeah heart dead is miss person dead but we have lot of patients who are brain dead what they do they try to donate all the organs to others and they'll try to save him that means all the organs are still working except brain and that's why that person is in coma but he is still living correct and let me tell you one thing art is a important part of your body itself and data is as important as heart in all of the application without data never ever think of any application that you can work with it it's a static application it's a dynamic application even a very small data is important for us without data never think of any application that is running in the market people who think is the data engineering is still going to be demand forever i'll answer you the first question unless and until that the data stops getting generated there is no work for you and you can think at one point of time is a data going to be stable people are going to stop using internet people are going to stop using all this applications that is a day maybe the data driven technologies may also go down right there are a lot of applications which has launched in the last few years the entire one year okay the covid time the entire one year i was staying alone right and you know what i never ever stepped out of my house food swiggy zomato anything which i want headphones laptops any of the products amazon flipkart you know what even if i want to do an air cut we do have urban club what is there and i try to get everything done with just my only smartphone with only my smartphone i was able to achieve and i am able to lead a normal life every human being has been into a comfort zone now on an average just a challenge between you and me the time is 9 o'clock in this day tomorrow 9 o'clock i'll tell you the same day 24 hours if i just go and calculate the average number of hours that you would have spent on your smartphone would be minimum 6 to 7 hours challenge me that if it's not happening just keep your phone aside don't touch for one day let's see is it possible is it ever possible not to touch your smartphone for one single one complete day can we do that not possible one day you cannot I I I wanted to tell you this story. Okay, two thousand twenty one, two thousand twenty one. Ah, uh, in the month of October, uh, somewhere between one and five. I don't know the date. Six hours, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp was not working. 
nine o'clock in the night IST time till four o'clock in the morning time. You were never able to send any messages. You were not able to browse any of the uh, uh, news in the Facebook and the complete Instagram was down. How many of you remember this? Six hours. WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. All three were completely was halted for six to seven hours. Do you all remember this? And Facebook has claimed that they have been like in the loss of 60,000 crore dollars. They have lost in that five to six hours just because the three applications was not working. And you know what? I was also experienced that in that time, Maybe I was not able to use Facebook. I was not able to use Instagram. I was not able to use WhatsApp, but I was still using my smartphone. I was still using my internet. I was watching movies in Netflix. I was using Hotstar. I was doing a transactions in Google Pay, Phone Pay, and I was using all of Amazon Flipkart. Other things I was using, maybe just three applications I was not using. Just imagine a life in the next six hours. What if the entire internet is down? Can you ever imagine a life without an internet? Forget about three apps. Those three apps were down for six hours. What if I say you that for the next six hours, you don't have any of the internet connectivity in your smartphone. Can you imagine a life? Not for, not, sir. Your smartphone has become like one of your body part. You cannot live without that. It's a hard fact that I need to accept it. You need to accept it. I need to accept it. In the last one hour, I have also taken my smartphone. I have seen the messages. Even I am responding. No one can be without smartphones. Right? And that's the hint I'm giving you. If you are choosing this technology, please be remembered that you choose any data-driven technologies. This is going to be forever. As long as you stop using the internet, you stop using your smartphones, you stop using all of these devices, nothing can stop you in generating the data. Right? And the reason why all these applications have been increasing and the one Thing which I would say is a evolution of big data. So far, I'm talking about data, 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 data. And for the first time, I'm introducing a concept called big data. What is big? I don't have a specific definition for big. Something which is like, big. Something which is big. We are talking about data. Now we are going with the big data. Now, as in then the name implies, big means something which is huge. Now, what is the reason that the data is getting generated in a very fast matter the first and more fo foremost thing is internet usage and everyone is having smartphone in their hand right everyone will have apart from smartphone we do have a lot of devices that is getting generated right cctv camera the best example every day 24 by 7 the video is getting recorded your store your watch the watch which you wear Right? It's getting recorded. It's measuring your sleep. It's taking your heartbeat into consideration. All of this is getting, data is getting generated. And the reason why it is increasing, it's all because of these three points. Internet usage, smartphones, sensors, smart devices. And the more importantly, IoT is also going to be the future. People who don't know what is IoT, Internet of Things. Okay, um, you can mark this day, 27th of July being a Thursday, I'm giving you one written document to you. In the next 10 years, the world is going to change to IoT. 10 years back when Kohli made his debate, there was no Instagram and there was, there was no WhatsApp. Today, we are all using Instagram and WhatsApp. 10 years next down the line, I'll give you an, uh, an written document. The world is going to change to Internet of Things. What is this internet of things? Every home is going to be like a smart home. There will not be any physical switches in your house. 10 years from the down the line, take it from me. There is no physical switches in your house. If you want to turn off your fan, if you want to switch on your tube light, or if you want to switch on your, all of this will be from your smartphone. You can turn off your AC with your smartphone. You can turn off your fan with your smartphone. You can turn off your lights with your smartphone. You can operate your television with your smartphone. Everything is going to turn to IoT. First of all, we are not able to manage the data. If I talk about IoT, I have to talk for years now. And all of this, you know why it's getting popular? User-friendly usage. 
you need not be a graduate to use your smartphone you give it to your kid your kid will use better than you you need not have a formal education to go and use a smartphone two minutes back my mom is asking me from the other room what is the breakfast i need to prepare for you just just sitting in 5 meters away and she is sitting in other room i am sitting in my room taking the session she cannot come and interrupt the class because uh, it's like i am taking a class so she cannot come and disturb she is dropping a message i think you will be finishing the class in next 15 20 minutes what this the lunch, uh, breakfast you want that is where the technologies are moving now we struggled there was a life where we used to get only 100 messages per day and today we are able to send unlimited messages in whatsapp you can send audio video reels whatever you want you can send it and that's how the technology has been improving well i keep talking about technology but please remember the backbone is data without data nothing is going to happen and these are all the reasons why the data is becoming big data and now the question comes how do you handle this big data and here you go that's why you are going to become a skillful person called data engineering who is going to manage the big data we started with a data and now we are concluding with a big data who is going to manage the big data who is going to organize the data who is going to clean the data who is going to transform the data well it's all in all it's you who is going to be a data engineer did i make it clear what exactly is a data engineer yeah we'll stop here we'll continue in the next class